Oh, hi. Hey, what's up? Sorry, I did not realize you were right there. No, you're fine. <laughs> fine, gave me a little serenade. That was great. Yeah, you know, you know me. All right, you're doing good. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go. All right. So, first of all, tell me what makes J War and J War. What are things people need to know about you in order, in order to understand who you are? Ooh, good question. Okay, um, let's see. I am, um, oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. To understand who I am, you have to know that I am genuinely very humble, but I pretend to be way too confident. Mm -hmm. um, all of my friends would say that I'm the most sarcastic of the group, easily. Um, and I pretend not to like any of my friends. Um, but I really care about them a lot. That would be like me the person. Me the musician. Um, I just love to have fun. Like I love being on stage, being in front of people and making sure that people are having like the best time of their lives. So um, yeah, it's all about just having fun and enjoying, enjoying the music, enjoying the moment, the party, the show, wherever it is. But um, yeah, just helping people to have fun. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I could see that because actually I saw you perform at Utah State last year. Uh, when you oh, came really? you welcome. Yeah, that's how, that's how I know who you are and stuff. I heard you sing. Um, and I, I remember that, that it was a very fun, it was a very fun moment. It was a very fun concert that you had. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's I so awesome. That, that, that was, was um, that was our first show, like with that. Oh, I, okay. This is what happened. I remember now. So the day of the show, my normal drummer was like, hey, I'm really sick. Um, he had a seizure and like had oh. to go to the hospital. Yeah, day of the show. And yeah. like that morning, I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Okay, well, um, like, you know, obviously uh, take care of what you need to take care of and like, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. So I was just on the phone, like trying to find a drummer to come who had never rehearsed with us, like never played with us before. Um, and Matt Wilson ended up coming and played that show. And literally with no practice no rehearsal all we had was sound check he just absolutely smashed the show and it was so good and now he's like he's the drummer now but yeah nice. <laughs> that, yeah i remember that that was a really fun show that's awesome. oh, it was awesome it was absolutely great i that's how i know your music that's how we're now here so cool cool all right so was was music ever a decision like was there ever a moment where you sat down and decided I'm going to be a musician or do you think it was something that has just always been there and it just was bound to happen? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. I mean, I guess it's like primarily no, just because I've always been singing my entire life. Um, since I was a baby, like I've just always been singing and grew up in like church and school doing choirs and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, I've always been singing for, for my whole life. But in 2017, it was the decision to like go full time into music and go like full career mode. I had been making music before that, but um, yeah, 2017 was like, all right, now we're gonna make this like my job and what I do. Mm -hmm. Was there a specific event or situation that made that switch or what had it been slowly building the idea to just go completely career with music? Um, and we had we had been like slowly building to it <clears throat> and then I think what ended up happening was that I lost my job and then my wife and I were just like this is probably just a sign like let's just go full-time music um like no sense because we knew that's like that's what we wanted to to be doing um so yeah it was just like all right we're doing it now I guess yeah cool do you do you remember or do you have a your earliest memory connected to music can you when you look back on like your childhood or stuff like is was music always there okay there are two stories um one would this one i don't remember but i've heard it so many times from my mom that like i feel like i remember it but yeah. she says when i was 18 months old so like tiny um <laughs> yeah she was like yeah you would 
um, try to sing along with Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. And he would just be like, ah, we are, we always love you. And apparently that's when she was like, yeah, that's what I knew. You were a singer. Um, <clears throat> and that's a very ambitious song for an 18 yeah. month old like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I would say that would show that you're going to go off and be a singer at 18 months singing that. Oh, man. I know. For real, right? Um, so then, yeah, there was that. And then in second, the one that I remember, like, very clearly was hmm. in second grade, we were doing, you know, those little, like, uh, like school shows that you, like, the class just, like, sing some songs for the parents and that kind of thing. Um, so our second grade class was singing... Um, Oh my gosh. Um, you are my sunshine. You are my sunshine. Lilas. And um, Miss Simpson heard me like singing it kind of off to the side. And she was like, oh, wow, you're a really good singer. You should do the solo. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, yeah. And that that's like the earliest memory that I have of like someone else realizing like, oh, yeah, you can sing. Like, let's put you in front and have you do it. So. Yeah, I think as, as early as second grade, that's kind of when I knew, like, oh, yeah, I can. That is awesome. That's super cool. All yeah. right, so for a moment, I want you to pretend that I have I don't know who you are. I've never heard of you. I've never heard any of your music. But I want, okay. you, to pit, I want you to pitch your music to me. I want you to describe it to me. Okay. Um, um, okay, we don't know each other. I'm going to pitch the music. Okay. <clears throat> Um, hi, I'm Jay. Hello, I'm Dara. Hi, Dara. Pleasure to meet you. Um, Dara, have you, when was the last time that, like, you and your friends were getting ready to go out and just, like, putting your clothes on and, like, having fun and just, like, being really excited to go out somewhere? When was the last time that, that you guys did that? Um, probably just a couple days ago when I was, okay. yeah. Dope, amazing. What um what kind of like what kind of music do you guys listen to while you're getting ready to go out? Hmm, getting ready, um, pump up songs. So normally like some Lizzo or um, Beyonce as well. They're really yeah. good hype up songs. Absolutely. Okay. My music has three phases to it. Okay. There is the the pregame phase. There is like beautiful disaster, take it higher. That is like the anticipation, the excitement of getting ready to go out. And then there is <clears throat> being out. So go slow is the like, we're out, we're at the club, we're at the party, we're having a good time. And then there's the post game music, the like, now we're in the car, on the way home. I'm like hanging out with the guy that I might kind of like. And, um, you know, we might get to know each other a little bit more after the party. There's three phases to it. So there's something for pregame, at the party, and after the fact. So whatever you need, just throw on some Jay Warren, and I can guarantee you it'll fit the soundtrack to whatever you're doing. That, that is an even better pitch than I was expecting. That is great. That, that's an awesome pitch. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Legit. Yeah. All right. If I if I wasn't already really into your music, I th that would that would sell me. That's pretty great. Um, so you you dive into it a little bit talking about the, your different your three different phases that you feel your music has. Um, but what do you feel is like the purpose behind your music? What's the purpose behind each song? Oh gosh. I mean, so I'm each song kind of has its own has its own purpose so to speak um like it, it has its own emotion that i'm trying to convey something that's so inter interesting about music is that like i can write a song and it will mean one excuse me, it'll mean one thing to me right like as i'm writing it i'll be thinking of something like specific or something that happened or some story i've made up right but then once I release the song and other people are hearing it and listening to it, it can mean something totally different to them, mm -hmm. which I, I think I used to think was like a little bit frustrating because I was like, well, that's not what I was talking about. But I think as I've like become a better songwriter and kind of understood music a little bit more, like I love that about music. 
is that I can have a specific purpose for a song and it can do something for me, but then you could hear that exact same th song and think of something completely different that I was never even thinking of um, and how, how it relates to you. So the songs I would say have their own specific purposes, but I think me as an artist, I, my goal is to just bring people together. And like while they're either at a show or with friends listening to the music, um, that you can kind of forget about all of the craziness that's going on, like especially 2020, like all of the 2020 type things that are happening and just be in the moment and present where you are. So I think the purpose of my music is, is just bringing people together. Awesome, that's amazing. So he, right now, could you walk me through your process of songwriting? Like, how do you find the inspiration? How do you find the lyrics? How does, how does a song come to you? Yeah, um, it happens a few different ways, but most often um, it is, I'll be at home here. So this is kind of the, the little home studio set up and there's a little keyboard and whatnot and yeah. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I'll sit down and I try to, I start at the piano, that, that, that's what I play is the piano, um, and guitar, but I'm pretty I sit down at the piano and I just start messing around, kind of playing chords, trying to find sounds that I like and whatnot. And then once I find a chord progression that I like, um, I just start humming and kind of just trying to find a melody that feels like it makes sense with whatever I'm playing. Um, and then once I find the melody, I try to find like one line, one lyric that works with that melody. Um, and I think one of my one of my favorite examples of this was so I have a song called Closer. Um, it was my first single, so back in 2017. Um, and the first line that came to me is actually the first line of the song. So it was. Um, how could I expect you to wait for me like lovers do when I wasn't there for you? And at the moment, like I didn't have like a story in mind. It was just like a lyric that I was like, wow, that's really cool. Like, I like that. Um, so once I find that lyric, I, kind of, I take a step back and I try to imagine almost like a movie or like a script of like, all right, there's this character and he's saying this line, how could I expect you to wait for me like lovers do when I wasn't there for you? And I basically just build this like movie around it um, and try to think of like the story of why he's saying that and like what's going on in his life to make him do that. And then once I have that story, then I write the rest of the song about the story that I just made up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so sometimes there's like a bit of me in there, like I'll insert things that I've gone through or things that like friends have gone through. Um, or sometimes like, so my wife and I love reality television. Um, okay. And so an amazing source of inspiration is literally just like take anything that anyone has ever said on a reality TV show because it's so dramatic and then write a song about that. Like you can just write songs about what's going on in The Bachelor because it's just so it, dramatic. So yeah. <laughs> anyone looking for inspiration to write songs, go watch The Bachelor, find their favorite line Absolutely. from the night, Absolutely. and uh, yeah. <laughs> go write a song. Write a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any songs that like have lines from based off of reality TV um, So I don't have any where I've like just taken the line and been like yep i'm just gonna make that the line in the song but there definitely are not on this album but on the next album um because we have some songs that are almost ready for the next album that yeah are inspired by reality tv uh scenes yeah it's kind of funny amazing i absolutely love that yeah you can find inspiration anywhere for a song oh definitely definitely i agree inspiration is a is a very strange thing it's like you can't force it but like it comes out of anywhere and anywhere and yeah but all right so you would just mentioned that you your album because you just released your first full-length album give love yeah. uh, i was on september 25th um that it That's came out right. all right so let's talk about that for a minute he you just explained to me how you write songs 
So can you explain to me a little bit how you went about creating the entire album? Yeah, so this album, let's see. How did this album start? The very first song that was written for this album is, is the title track. So the last song on the album, Give Love. Um, and I wrote that way back in, I want to say like 2018. Um, yeah, it was a while ago. It was yeah, definitely a while ago. And um, I knew that I wanted that to be the last song on the album because it kind of ends on that give love, give love, give love to get love. And it just kind of like gets quiet, quiet, quiet and just fades away. Um, and I kind of just wanted that to be like stuck in people's heads as they finish the album. So that was the first song written. And then I think the next one was Take It Higher. So the first single off the album. Um, and I wrote the song here at home and then my buddy Nate Waite, who plays guitar for me, so if you were at that show, he's the guitarist, um, he executive produced this album. So that process is like, I'll write the song and it'll have just kind of like the bare bones of instruments, just like, um, basically it'll just have like drums and like piano. And then I'll send that to him, come up with all of the rest. So like all the other instruments, what's the guitar going to do? What's the bass going to do? Da, 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 da. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so I wrote Take It Higher and what Nate produced that one. And sonically, like it was just so, it was such a fun song that I was like, okay, I want this to be the feel of the album. Like this is kind of like our center and we can go right, we can go left of that. But like this sound, this kind of like fun, upbeat, almost like pop funk um, type sound is going to be the, the center of the album. Um, and then after that, it was just, yeah, I was just continuing to write a bunch of songs. And um, I have behind, well, behind you is <laughs> I have this whiteboard. Um, oh, wait, I can probably turn this around. That has like a whole bunch of songs on it that we were picking for picking from for the album um yeah so we were just I, I was just writing a bunch a bunch a bunch and basically we just picked like the best ones for mm -hmm. for this album and well actually that's not even true because there are two that i was like these are so good we have to wait until like i'm bigger because these songs need to be like everywhere so there are two yeah. that we saved for the next album but um yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just it was just a long writing process. And then once I would finish the song, I'd send it off to Nate and he'd produce it. And um, then we'd go into Solarium Studios, which is in Alpine, Utah. Um, and we recorded the album there. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's like, that was pretty much the process. Just a bunch of writing and then cutting the songs that we were like, uh, these are all right. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you've had this album in your head for a little bit, because it seems like, yeah, you wrote Give Love back in 2018. And you knew then you yeah. wanted that to be. So. Yeah, working. absolutely. I mean, I purposely had, so like I said, I put out my first single in 2017. And purposely my plan was, I'm just going to release singles, 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 until I felt like I had a large enough fan base to where the album wouldn't just like, go to like a thousand people mm -hmm. um like i wanted it to be a bigger thing than just a new artist putting out an album so yeah we per i purposely waited for yeah like three years before putting out an album and i think it paid off but yeah well definitely just because what i'm about to say next is so yeah give love your first album and it reached number one on itunes charts for the rv album <sighs> i mean <laughs> Talk, talk to me about that. That must have been absolutely incredible for you since this is oh yeah, it's your first God. album. What was, what was that like for you? Oh my goodness. So my team, I have a really small team. It's like there's me, my manager, Haley, uh, my lawyer, Justin, and then like Nate, who executive produces the album. Uh, and then there are other like band members and musicians and whatnot. But that's kind of like the central team. And um, I had this goal. I was like, I want to do something that's like big enough to where it's like, it scares us. And then, but something that is also, uh, what's the word? Like realistic, like, mm -hmm. okay, I think we can do this. 
Um, so yeah, I was like, well, there's never been a Utah artist to go number one on an iTunes chart for R&B. So let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's pick that one. Um, yeah, and it was, it was nerve wracking because, so originally, um, and if, if you scroll back like through my Instagram when I first announced the album, you would see this, but um, the album was supposed to come out on September 18th. Mm-hmm. And so the whole time we had this pre-order campaign, like getting people to order the album before it was actually out um, to try to get as many orders as we can. And <clears throat> um, so we're getting ready, we're getting ready. And on iTunes, you can see like the the ranking of pre-orders, like who has the most and that kind of thing. So in R&B, the entire time we were number two, only behind Alicia Keys. And I wasn't worried about it because her album, oh, excuse me, her album wasn't like the date said expected December 31st. So I was like, okay, cool as long as her album doesn't come out on September 18th, then we're fine because we're so far, we're ahead of everybody else, which that was nuts in and of itself. Um, And yeah, so literally two days before the album comes out, so September 16th, um, Alicia Keys, the only ahead of me, announced that she's putting out her album on September 18th and like I saw that and I was like oh my gosh literally the only artist who is ahead of me right now is now changing her release date to the exact same day as mine and we've had this entire campaign about going number one and da 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 so <clears throat> yeah basically in a panic we were like all right I can either just release it on the 18th and kind of take the L and just be number two or we can try to because like two days before it's really hard to like push the album a week out and um but we were like you know what we've done all this work we can't come in second like we have we have to come in first so publicly and this is the first time that i'm telling anyone outside of our team but publicly we said that like oh we have a few changes that we need to make to the album blah 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 so we're gonna push it a week no, it was literally just because Alicia Keys announced her album. And I was like, there's no way that we can do this. Like, we're not going to beat Alicia Keys because she was already ahead of us. She was yeah. the only artist ahead of us. Um, so, yeah, the 18 came. She released her album. It obviously went number one and the, in R&B. And then basically we were just crossing our fingers that, like, hopefully we have enough momentum so that by the week later, we could knock her off of number one and and go number Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And like the 25th came and it, for like the most of the morning we were number two and I was just like, I kept refreshing my phone like over Mm -hmm. and over and over again. Like, Oh my God, I don't know if we're going to do it. I don't know if we're going to make it. Um, and then it finally like around noon or 11, something like that. Um, yeah, we like finally passed her and went number one. And it was amazing. It, like, <laughs> I grew up listening to Alicia Keys. And so like being able to just, yeah, on that release day, like come out at number one above Alicia Keys was was nuts. It was absolutely crazy. Yeah. I mean, that that's quite an accomplishment. I mean, first album, number one. And yeah, like you said, it was the first one out of Utah to do that, which absolutely incredible absolutely real congratulations on that by the way yeah all right thank you um, thank you, thank you. Uh, i mean so yeah i followed all that on on instagram i um, was was seeing that and so I, I remember i was really hyped when i saw that it was that it was number one i thought that was super cool and i was really hyped um thank you yeah of course so beyond your music um you you run a podcast with your wife annie called the internet's mom and dad um do you want to tell me a little bit about that about how how is it different writing a podcast and running a podcast to yeah music how did that come about the podcast is so much fun um that is it's, it's, I mean, for me, it's way easier than writing music because <laughs> the podcast is basically just a coffee 
conversations that Annie and I normally have at home. Um, yeah. And it's, we just get to record them now. Yeah. Um, it was, so it was Annie's idea for a while. And she was like, babe, I think we need to start a podcast, blah, blah, blah. Like, we have a lot of random things that we talk about all the time. And so we might as well record them. Um, and yeah, I think I was the one that was dragging my feet about it. I don't know. I don't remember why. I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, we'll do it. Da, 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 da. Um, and then quarantine hit. And we we're like, well, there is nothing else to do. So <laughs> let's do it. Like, let's, let's go in. Let's start the podcast. Um, and yeah, that worked out really well. Like, we, we love it. It's just like a fun opportunity for us to sit down, talk. Um, and then, I mean, we named it the Internet's Mom and Dad because within our friend group and then like the people that we meet, somehow we just end up always being like the mom and dad of the group. And <laughs> um, yeah, so we were like, well, let's just go with that. But we'll be the Internet's Mom and Dad. And yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. And you, what do you guys talk about on your podcast? Mm. People who don't, who aren't familiar with it. Yeah. Anything and everything. I mean, um, and podcasting is interesting because I think as you like continue to do it, it like shifts a little bit and whatnot. Well, I guess depending on what kind of podcast, but I mean, I would say it's like, it's a lifestyle pop culture type podcast where we talk about, like we talk about current events we talk about pop culture things like a lot of reality television um <laughs> and and then we talk about like questions that we get from listeners and whatnot so every once in a while we'll put out a question like what is something that you've done that you'll never do again or tell us about your worst date and like that type of stuff and then we'll just talk and laugh about all the different things that people send in um yeah it's it's just I don't know. I feel like it's an extension of like hanging out with us. If you listen to the podcast, it's, you feel like you're just hanging out. That's awesome. That's super cool. All right. We're starting to run out of questions, but this one, this is, it's a little bit generic. I know. And I'm sorry, but it's okay. That's okay. Where, <laughs> where do you see yourself in five years in terms of your music, in terms of your podcast, where are you wanting to take them and where are you wanting to go with them? Wow, that is actually an extremely timely question. Literally yesterday, my manager and I went over our 10-year, five-year, and one-year goals. Okay, um, awesome. Where, where we want to be. So big picture, five years from now, um, I want to have a net worth of $10 million. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we set that goal and we were like, that is crazy, but we're going to make it happen. Yeah. We're going to figure out how to make that happen. Um, so yeah, net worth of $10 million. Um, having gone on three national tours, um, a, uh, five years. Okay. So yeah, three albums in the billboard top 200 and then one album or one song in the billboard top 100. Um, one of those albums going number one on the top 200. Um, what else did we say? The, so we had 1 million, um, five years. What else did we do? National tours. Da, 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 da. Oh, I think we were one world tour. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. What else did we say? Oh, likely. So I'm from San Diego um, and originally, but I mean, I've lived here now since 2009. So now I'm basically from Utah. But um, I think that long term, I like ideally we have to end up back in Southern California. But even as I say that, like we have such strong Utah ties now that it's, it's almost like we would want to have a house both places. So that we could like do work here, but didn't like escape to the beach and whatnot. So probably a house in California. Um, probably, oh yeah, probably like two more kids. And I think that's like, that's pretty much it. 
Like that's, yeah, that's where, that's where I want to be in five years from now. Yeah. Lofty goals. I mean, but if your goals don't scare you, you're not doing them right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you're definitely, you're looking to just go big, go big or go home. And you just oh, yeah. want to go for it. Absolutely. I mean, music is playing A through Z for me. Like that's what our team always says. It's like, it's playing A through Z. So whatever it takes to make it work let's let's figure it out and do it yeah awesome that well i have complete complete faith in you i think you definitely be able to to do it love your stuff love your music and i feel like from just talking with you you have the ambition you have the passion to, to be able to go for it so i'm super excited to watch it personally I'm super excited thank to watch you. it. thank you thank you thank you uh, you're welcome all right so this is our last question and this one this is this is very very important what's your favorite song at the moment <laughs> Oh, of my own or just in general? Um, how about both? Tell me, tell me what your favorite song okay. that you've written and then what's your favorite song in general right now? Ooh, okay. Um, right now, my favorite song that I've written, I think is, it's a tie between Beautiful Disaster and Closer. Um, I, I, Closer just has this special place in my heart. And then Beautiful Disaster is just so fun. Like I can't wait to play that live. Um, so yeah, those, those are probably my favorite from what I've written. And then outside of what I've written right now, what am I really, what am I, what am I listening to? Um, okay. This is random, but it is, it is, um, Ben Platt's cover of River. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. It um, yeah, he, I mean, he plays the lead in the show, The Politician on Netflix. And in season one, he sings River. And I've been listening to that song on repeat. I like that man's voice is just gold. He, so freaking good. He has a beautiful, beautiful voice. His whole album that he released is, is gorgeous. But yeah, yeah, that song absolutely. specifically is wonderful. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I don't think that's random. I think that's great. Okay, great. Good, good, good. Yeah, I've been listening, <laughs> yeah, I've been listening to River, like, a lot. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. Awesome. All right, that's that's all I have for you. I don't have any more questions, but uh, Perfect. thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming and uh, for, for talking with me. It was such an honor for me. It was so much fun. Hope you were thank you. enjoyed it, too. Absolutely. No, I loved it. I had, I had a great time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Congratulations on the album. Congratulations on all your success. And, uh, okay. It was good talking yeah. to you. Thank good you. Good talking to you too. I'll see you. I'll see you too. Bye. Bye.